Hello, beautiful souls. How are you? It has been a minute before I gave you a, uh, since I gave you a new series, but this one has come in big and beautiful and loving, and I can't wait to start sharing it with you. Now, the information that I'm going to give you, it is, um, it's been long sought after. There are aspects of the information that I have felt within my being for a long time and have asked my spirit team. The time was not um, perfect to get any confirmations in that in in those questions up until a week ago. For those who think that things are not changing for the better, that the light is not full steam ahead um leading the way into new earth i i beg you please reserve that um judgment pull back go to that 40,000 foot view and really take a good assessment of things that are occurring um i know that there's a lot of chaos makers out there but they're not leading the world they are not and it is not that chaos is not for you on the highest timeline that takes us all to the frequency of 5D. You have to really anchor that frequency to become a part of that. That's part of the ascension is learning how to turn away from the distractions. So I really do invite you to sit back and um, receive this with an open heart and understand, understand, like Yeshua likes to remind me, um, that we are all brothers and sisters of source and mother Sophia, all of us, we are all of source. We are all energy and light and love of source. It's what we do with it. That matters. It's how we respond to things that really do define who and what we are in this now moment. So this series is titled the sacred order of the blue rose. Now, I'm going to give you a little preface before I dive into the meat of the information. I don't know how many videos this will end up being. The, the information um, has been coming in pretty regularly now that the green light has been given to disclose. And I don't know where it will take us. I don't know where it will go. I know that we are beginning with the truth of the order of the blue rose and all that that entails. And that in itself looks like it's going to be um, probably somewhere around three, maybe four videos, just that aspect of it. But I do endeavor to give you some long standing truths that no one wanted you to know. No one. It's been hidden for a very, very long time. And it had to be. It had to be. There was a time in my life where I thought, just give me the truth and let me decide what I can handle and what I can't handle. And it, that's one aspect of it, but that's not the biggest aspect of it. It's not that you could not individually handle the truth. It is more of a matter of those that would cause harm because of the truth had to be removed from their ability to cause harm. And that was the the bigger campaign, the bigger issue. And it's no longer an issue. The information I have been given to share with you came directly from the following beings. Magdalene, a.k.a. Maggie. Yeshua, a.k.a. DJ Yesh. He loves to communicate with us in song. And sometimes it's an icebreaker. Sometimes it's a mood changer. Sometimes it's messages. Sometimes it's clues but it's always good music. We love him. Uh, Mary, AKA mother Mary. She prefers ascendant master Mary, Ar um, Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Metatron, Archangel Gabriella, and ascendant master Melchizedek. The details are not easily found in anything that we have access to in terms of text, um, DNA. It's by design. It had to be hidden. It had to be hidden so much that not only could it not be proven, but it cannot be disproven. 
until now. Source Creator gave myself and my soul sister Aurelia this message about a week ago, maybe a little longer. The blue rose is important. Lucy will find the dots. Time for them now. I'll leave you with that. And he exited the channel chuckling. He really loves to. There's been often times where Source has given us a breadcrumb or me a breadcrumb and he fully anticipated for that breadcrumb to really keep me busy for a while and I connected the dots pretty quickly <laughs> so so he's become more and more vague over time and we do get a, a little bit of a laugh out of that I do feel like it's a little funny <laughs> so the information we already had, I, again, we had gotten downloads. We had, I had intuitive, intuitive pushes to ask certain questions that could never really be answered. And, you know, sometimes not getting an answer is the answer, right? Like if you ask a question, just because someone doesn't go, you're correct. It's in the energy. I can feel that it's confirmed. Um, we do continue to compile this information. As I said, it's coming in in waves. It's not just coming into me. It's coming into some of the other of my soul sisters. And so I don't know where it will take us. I do invite you along on this journey. I think it's going to be very enlightening for all. This is episode one of the sacred order of the blue rose. What I thought I knew about the blue rose could be summed up in basically a very short paragraph. I knew that the blue rose represented the flower that Yeshua presented to Maggie on their wedding night. And so it held such a special place for, in her heart that that was the iconic image um, that represented her order, her spiritual order that she um, taught throughout her life. And that's the end of the knowledge that I had um, confirmed and knew to be true. The rest of it that I had along the way, um, again, were downloads, were, um, intuitive nudges, were thing dots that I had connected, but up until this moment, they had not been able to be confirmed and we could not share them. And so I'm definitely excited to do so at this time. Archangel, or I'm sorry, Arch Ascendant Master Melchizedek started, the order of the blue rose initially on Venus and a millennia ago, there were intentions and attempts to anchor that frequency and the way the teachings, the foundational truths of the order of the blue rose in our culture, a couple of different times that failed the time that was successful was whenever it anchored through the mystery schools with Ascendant Master Mary. And she then passed that on to Yeshua and Maggie as they trained in the mystery schools under Mary, Hathor, and Isis and all of those. So the gift of the Order of the Blue Rose is that it is for higher consciousness beings on earth who are actively seeking ascension via virtuous living so there will be i have no doubt um various different um entities that belong to relig different religious orders that want this to not be true and the reason is because for this information to be true really means that their basis of their religion is false because the basis of their religion was is man-made and doesn't come from the divine it was manipulated to harness a certain amount of energy and control over a collective that is not what this is that is the antithesis of what this is so I will be making those distinctions along the way as I feel led. Maggie is here with me and she will interject along the way as well. She already has um, 
some. And so I may end up channeling her throughout this. I may just have messages that drop in. I'm not sure how it's going to go, but I am open and receiving all of the benevolent guidance so that this is exactly the message that it is meant to be. Why? Because you really only have one chance to make a first impression. So the gifts of the Order of the Blue Rose presented by Ascendant Master Melchizedek represent the virtues that are stepping stones through the ascension. It's also a shared philosophy demonstrated by the embodiment of the collective which is the populace of earth like that's the ultimate goal that enough embrace this as the way and if you have tapped into connecting to yeshua and the truth of his teachings and the truth of the teachings that came via the mystery schools through maggie yeshua ascendant master mary isis hathor green Terra. Kuan Yin, it's all encompassed under the umbrella of the way, the way. There were a couple unsuccessful attempts, like I said, of anchoring this on earth, but when it came through to Yeshua and Maggie, they held strong. They really resonated with this way of life and this teaching because it is benevolent and it is higher consciousness and it is also um, provides a, a very high level of clarity in each foundational principle. So as a being starts to go through this training, when they win, not if, but when they encounter the shadows of the, the things that they have to deal with, which is their shadow work, in order to truly um, process everything, heal everything, and reap the benefit of the lesson of it they really have to tie into these five virtues ascendant master mary taught them with a, a deep sense of reverence for the benevolence and also the truth the exacting clarity that can come from a being who is embodying the virtues of the order of the blue rose and it became and expected, accepted and expected um, spiritual process of the foundation of all the beings that entered into the mystery schools. The five virtues of the order of the blue rose, which are represented by the petals of the rose flower itself, are truth, peace, love, harmony, and valor. And I will be covering each of these virtues in depth in later videos. The cross that is associated with the Order of the Blue Rose is not the offensive false crucifix that is linked to the being they like to call Jesus. Instead, it is the balanced cross that is actually more similar and adopted with and from and in conjunction to the Knights Templars. By placing the beautiful blue rose in the center, it illustrates life, love, rebirth, renewal, peace, and harmony. Those same virtues. There are deliberate connections between the Order of the Blue Rose, the Knights Templars, the Rosicrucians, the Freemasons, and the Knights of the Round Table, as well as the Priory of Sion. The common thread was and is the preservation and protection of the sacred bloodline of Christ. As such, all Order of the Blue Rose initiates and members are protected by the Most High, Source Creator, and His Legion of Archangel Warriors. I have many of them with me now, and they always are. The Order of the Blue Rose in evolved into an, an invitation only order. That aligns with the light of source and illuminating the path to ascension, to and through ascension. The order of the blue rose closely resembles the Rosicrucians in theories and guidelines with requirements that must be met before ascending through 
the fan foundational ranks. These are foundations of learning and training that must be embodied and progress, forward progress seen to continue to move forward. So you may ask yourself, how does one join the Order of the Blue Rose? Well, it's not open to all. One must be invited. To be invited into the Order of the Blue Rose is one of the highest honors of the collective beings. Rites of passage is set with stages and phrases. These are all of the light and of the divine. Not all knowledge of the Order of the Blue Rose is availed to all members. It is segmented. And this is clearly intentional so that there cannot be any overreach of power of one aspect of the order versus the other. They really need all members working together collaboratively in order to be fully and completely successful. The Order of the Blue Rose teachings cover the path through and to the fifth dimension or any higher dimension aligned to love, providing that love is the key to all. And we have heard that coming up on a year now, I, I'm kid you not, every transmission that we receive from source mother sophia metatron which is my poppy um every being reminds us that no matter what the rest of the transmission had usually ended with love is the key and it became so clear to us that 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 duality perspective that we all grow up in in this in this world in this culture teaches us that, you know, love is to be romanticized and love is this um, unobtainable, unprovable thing. But when you want something, you just go after it. You force it. You're going to, you're going to claim it. And that's very low vibrational because yes, so one could attempt to force uh, becoming a member of these orders for power for the wrong reasons. That's why there's oversight. And that's why it's not just a matter of joining up. You have to walk the walk. You have to be in pure alignment and the essence of your being. And it's not decided by one person. Embodying the order of the Blue Rose philosophy is connected to embodying your heaven on earth, your Shambhala. The, that love and life is now. There's no waiting. Why are you waiting to be happy? Why are you waiting to be free? Why are you waiting to find your bliss? What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for permission? Source creator has given you permission a long time ago. You were born with permission to seek joy, bliss, happiness, love, fulfillment, compassion, empathy, kindness. It's always been there. The order of the blue rose is automatically in the path of all bloodline descendants, unless they choose to opt out because free will choice is honored no matter what, no matter what your station is, no matter what your position is, no matter what your level of experience is, you can be one of the highest esteemed archangels, ascendant masters. It doesn't matter. Your free will choice, that being's free will choice is always honored. It trumps all. All requests are received. Not all are accepted or approved. A soul applies to the order of the blue rose. The avatar doesn't. So the soul of me, the soul, the essence of me is Andalusia. It's why you see two names at the bottom of my screen. I know that my soul name, I know that my soul essence is Andalusia. When I incarnated in this lifetime, I chose the name Nicole. That's my earthly name that it goes along with this earthly body that I chose. But that's also a soul contract that's been completed. Transitioning from the being Nicole into back to the original being that I am, Lucy. It's very clear once you understand it. Once a, an invitation is made to that being, there's a panel, a board, who determine whether to accept the request. This is similar to the karmic board, which I cover in depth in my book, Sold or Soulless. You can pick that up on Amazon. 
we have a review and it's having access to all soul experiences. The karmic board has access to all your soul experiences because it's balancing your karma. It's determining whether your life choices, your free will choices in that life have balanced karma or are you too heavy in the negative and too are too heavy in the positive and then the next life determines to balance the karma of the previous and that is determined by the karmic board again the five virtues truth peace love harmony and valor are the litmus test and what choices are being made by that sold being to embody those virtues. So on the most trials of your life, the, the depths of your despair and the, the highest of your highs, did you remain true to the virtues of truth, peace, love, harmony, and valor? Do you fall short? Are you a, are you a, a, a liar? Or do you lie for power? Do you lie for your ego? Like these are real things that get weighed. So every opportunity and your reaction to that opportunity is what gets um, evaluated. Does the soul being choose to improve and strive toward the five virtues in all ways? The goal is to strive in a progress, forward progress, forward momentum. The goal is not perfection. We fully understand that there is no such thing. Both the Knights Templars and the Knights of the Round Table are loyal to the Order of the Blue Rose. As such, the sacred bloodline children of Yeshua and Maggie are called to lead the way. By living the example, being a living example, embodying all five virtues along with Ascendant Master Mary's wise words. Love the whole of your energy. That includes the thorns, not just the rose. So yeah, that's like duality in a very beautiful statement. There's light and dark and all. There's soft beauty and sharp thorns and all. It is up to us to navigate that. We accept our shadows because it allows us to appreciate the light more. No one really appreciates light when there's never been darkness. And we that volunteer to be here in this now moment are really very aware of darkness, more so than most beings in the universe that have never been on earth. That's why we are considered rock stars as far as incarnations go. We're over here just thinking we're having this fucked up life that like, who did this? Who decided this? And then we realize we did. We decided this. Oh, and by the way, so many other beings would have never taken this job. Anyway, embrace the shadows of your soul as it further anchors your truth and love for all stages of your soul expansion. When you deal with shadow work on a very uh, balanced aspect, that's why we use love, forgiveness, and gratitude, you are dealing with pushing the ego, getting out of the egoic mind and really truly learning the lesson. There's always lessons in our shadows. Whenever you remove that uh, hyperbole of the, of the ego and the egoic mind and what other beings outside of yourself feel is right for you, when you really get down to the nitty gritty of who and what you are and you navigate using love, forgiveness and grat gratitude, that is the key because you're feeling it you're allowing the healing, you're giving gratitude and the being in that heart space of gratitude is what allows for this massive expansion of our soul energy. The bloodline protections are shared by a few orders who swear an oath to protect and preserve the sacred, line sacred lineage. Now, what I'm about to get into, it's going to, it's going to, and because I've already seen it, I've already been down this rabbit hole myself. You're going to go looking for some timeline evidence. And the first thing I want to caution you about is that the timelines are really manipulated. So things that you may see in a text that says it happens in this year could not even be referenced in another text of that same time frame because of the manipulation and the edits. 
So I caution you to not dig into things in form of time and timelines because it's just a huge gray area. We look at the events and whenever I'm looking at this and, and this is the things that came through that was given, we're confirming with, with for the Freemason stuff, I'm confirming with St. Germain. St. Germain is my soul grandfather and he lived many lives as a Freemason. When I'm confirming for the Rosicrucians, I'm confirming with Ascendant Master Mary and Maggie. When I'm confirming with, you see, so I'm going to beings that lived it. It's their experience. This is their firsthand account. And I get corrected based on things that I thought I knew from texts. So absolutely, you want to steer away from, I mean, we've learned it, like, we're taught that that references and receipts are what prove truth. And that's really only true a very small percentage of time because of the vast amount of deceit within creation of text. They are being created to support a narrative that is false and has been false forever. So... In the search of truth, I had to let go of the fact that I wasn't going to find it because it was never meant to be found. This, this information was never meant to come out because it completely flips the tables of organized religion and their stories that they have told. So again, open mind, open heart. Let the frequency of the message resonate within your being. Your body will tell you if this is truth or not. The Freemasons, the Rosicrucians, the Templars are all submitted volunteers who possess the re required substance. And I say substance by meaning soul essence to carry out a lifelong oath of protection, no matter what. These initiates were held to the same standards as any others. Fully embody and dedicate to strive in constant progress of the five virtues, along with other regulations and policies of the order. These are lifelong appointments once entrusted with this information of the sacred bloodline and swearing an oath to fulfill this commitment it is taken to their grave. So much energy. In 1307, King Philip IV of France determined he would rather destroy the Knights Templars instead of repaying them all the loans he took out. Now, this is vast very very widely documented um by proponents of the crown and opponents of the crown this was widely known that the system of checks and balances that the templars created amassed a great wealth a great wealth and they ended up having as an organization more liquid funds than royal kingdoms and those royal kingdoms needed funds for their wars, for their this and for their that. And so they took out loans from the Templars because at the time that was the only like big liquid, um, I want to say bank. I, I just keep hearing it was like a bank, but it's not like financial institutions that we know of, but it was literally where, you know, Mr. Smith had too much gold to travel around with so he gave the gold to the templars they kept it they gave him an order of receipt he amassed this amount of wealth and he traded off of it without having to carry it around with him because the templars were all over the, the countryside and so he could go into any other templar um, area and it was recorded that he had amount this amount of of wealth and they validated it for him. So his wealth, his receipt was backed by his own gold and it was irrefutable. So lots of times there are 
um, and, and this is with all, I feel, elites, there's a certain amount of credit extended just based on name, but it doesn't actually mean they have the wealth to back it, right? Well, that's not the way the Templars worked. You had jewels, you had gold, you had uh, diamonds, you had w whatever that had wealth. That is how you were given a receipt for that wealth. I mean, things were weighed. It was very on, on the up and up. It was very clear. This is what you have. This is what it amounts to. And this is what the amount of wealth you now have assigned to your name. Well, King Philip had taken out so many loans that he decided he could never repay them. So it was easier to come up with um, persecutor, persecutory lies and allegations against the Templars that would cause them to be eradicated. And then he would, um, he would seize the assets for himself. Sounds very royal, doesn't it? So the, the stories that were sent out that are the allegations were that the Templars engaged in um, deviant behavior, homosexual acts, and ritualistic practices. And I know what I know, and that was exactly what the crown, the French crown, the French royal families were doing. They were just projecting their own sins onto the Templars. And there is a mass am amount of evidence that, I mean, the French were and are, in my opinion, um, some of the most cruel beings that ever walked this planet in forms of torture and ritual and sacrifice and expectation of sacrifice and just the whole disregard for life. So when this was done, it, they, the armies of all these royal families that had the same link, they all owed the Templars money. Then they all banded together to get rid of their common enemy, right? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. So in truth, it was the acts of these families that they just projected. They said, you know, if, if anybody ever knew the truth of what we did or what we do, of what we participate in, we would be hunted down until the last member is taken care of. So let's just put this stuff out on the Templars and they'll be hunted down and they'll be um, tortured and imprisoned and uh we want all their secrets. We want their money. We want their wealth. We want their connections. And then we're going to destroy them. That's what's known as um, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th came from this event, this proclamation that was made by King Philip of France. So the Templars were hunted down. They were many of them murdered. Many were imprisoned until they died. And some surviving members that escaped fled to other parts of England, Ireland, Scotland, and they found each other again. What happened was then the, the Royal family and the church, the Vatican took over control of the Templars. So they created, they took over the Templars. They put in soldiers of their of the Vatican and the royal philosophy. And that's when the Crusades began. And they were just a murderous extension of the church. That those are not the Templars of uh prior to that Friday the 13th. Those were not the benevolent ones with oaths to protect the order of the Blue Rose. When they found each other in other countries. They quietly practiced their oath. They quietly determined what they could do to maintain that secrecy. And they did for hundreds of years. In 1717, the first Grand Lodge of England was established and the Freemasons began. And the Freemasons are an offshoot of the survivors of the Knights Templar. There's good and bad in all groups and races and all subgroups. When I used to believe that you could, uh, any being, any being could only be benevolent and good in the Freemasons up to a certain degree. 
I was corrected. I was wrong. St. Germain, who, again, that is a soul grandfather to me, is a, someone that I'm in pretty frequent connection with. There are good and bad in many, many high degrees of the Freemasons. But because of the protection of the order of the Freemasons, because of the protection that is embedded within that society, there are powerful deviants that are members and become members of the Freemasons to then exploit that protection and hide behind it while they continue to be malevolent beings. And free will choice is always honored. Always. That is many of those beings had soul contracts to be deviants in that life. You see, so it can't totally be eradicated until that being's growth is completed. And there's just always going to be du duality in the third dimension. Always. Now, the secrecy is embedded to provide protection, right, through anonymity. The Freemasons took their oath very seriously because if you got one to speak about maybe some benevolent secrets, well, would they also speak about malevolent ones that could take other people down in the order and jeopardize the entire order? Yes. So it's not that they wanted or condoned the benevolent ones. It's not that they condoned the actions of the malevolent ones, but they were all held to this oath. They were all held to the order of secrecy next time i'm going to cover the children of maggie and yeshua the homestead of maggie and yeshua and the order that has lived on for hundreds of years take care